NGC Atlas Photographic by um, Olivier Godol is a observation guide, as is written, Guide to Observation. And uh, a, I had an unboxing of this a few months ago. And now I had the time to go actually do the uh, full paging of this book. This is the essential guide for any kind of observation. NGC Atlas includes the Messi Atlas also because all the objects of the Messi are bright enough to be included in this. And uh, so let's go without any further ado and see the inside of the book. This part, which is a very simple French, we can understand in English also, is available in English translation uh, through a PDF. The author sends it to you when you purchase this book. And that's the guide for it, Lexic. See if I can take this camera slightly closer so we can see better. So this is the list of all, all the Messier objects with a photograph of them. So this is the autumn, as you know. In this side is a slice of the meridian, exactly over the south. And you see the NGC and Messier objects on this. So this is the autumn sky, and you can see a slice of the Andromeda uh, and uh, pieces and uh, Ketus, which goes up to there where the Cassiopeia is located there. The list of the objects are here and uh, NGC number, the type, magnitude, uh, constellation, right ascension, declination, filter, if you need a filter, that's a very important information, very nice, and a brief information. And here you see a photograph, representative photograph, not to be uh, big observatory telescopes, just a photograph with amateur telescopes or small medium telescopes, as you can see here. The old objects are also photographic, for photographically represented. Also the field of view or the actual angular size of this. I have to investigate that. I think this mostly is the angular size of them because yeah, one degree. Yeah, that's the one degree. That's the uh, angular size, I think, of the field of view. Because Andromeda is more than one degree, definitely. It's at least three, four degrees I've seen around that size. Anyway, let's go for the next slice. Again, we are in the autumn. And this slice as it's slightly have moved this size means that the sky is moving this size, this side. So the objects are listed again. This is good for if you want to uh, make a list for uh, observing the constellations and the deepest sky objects for every night, you can actually use this. You can make a list of the objects that you think are bright enough. You have the equipment like filter, and uh, you know if uh, if this uh, uh, the type of the object that you are looking for. There is a legend here which actually explains all the symbols used on this. 
now we are gradually moving toward the triangulum and piece, uh, aries and the central ketus. Now we have moved slightly again toward the uh, east. So the sky is moving toward it, so they are coming over the south. And we see more objects in the Andromeda and some objects in the Perseus. And moving down gradually toward the Eridanus. Now we are moving toward the head of the Ketus. And Perseus is in the field of view also. I must say the quality of the paper is good. I'm not sure it is waterproof, but it can be, can be, yeah, moderately probably weatherproof. Of course, you can just mm, take the pages out if you want. You can purchase two copies of this, or if you have one copy, just take the pages out. It's not a coffee table style book. Of course, you can study it for your own if you have a knowledge for it. Definitely, I enjoyed taking it on a coffee table and then a study. But you can also t put every individual page inside the mm, cover and take it outside with you. Plastic cover. And now we are seeing the objects in the Eridanus. As you can see, we are moving in the Eridanus area. You see Pleiades in Taurus are now visible. Perseus. And they are over the meridian, I should say, actually. And we are moving gradually toward the uh, uh, Auriga, also covering Auriga. And as you can see, this is the constellation. Um, oh God! It's a hair, anyway, hair. What? What? I forgot the Latin name for it. Lep, lep, leopard. No, lepus. Probably I forgot. Anyway, don't contact me. There is a Columba behind it, also under it here on the horizon. Uh, <clears throat> Then we are now in the Orion with all these beautiful um, deep sky targets. These are all around the Orion Nebula. Beauty, that looks like a face of a joker. That one. NGC 1909. Now we are moving gradually toward the um, east side of the Auriga and uh, gradually Gemini is coming to fill the view but he's not yet there. You can see the flame nebula here. Now we have moved to the Monocerus. This is the Rosetta Nebula or Rosette Nebula. It's a star cluster which is visible, nothing much, you know, just a few stars like a, a parallelogram or something like that. But uh, in long exposure photos or under the right conditions with the right filter, you can see actually the yeah, oxygen 3 filter or ultra high contrast filter will show you the some of the nebulosity. In long exposure photos, you can see it. The full extent of it, which looks beautifully, truly like a rose. And now we are moving toward uh, uh, Gemini and uh, Canis Major. So, as you can see, we have here, am I right? I can see M35. One of these must be M35, but uh, probably in the previous page we saw it. Anyway, we are moving now toward the central part of the Gemini and gradually toward the Canis Minor. Now we are moving, moving toward the head of the Gemini. 
and uh, here we can see gradually Cantorus is coming if you are of course starter, um, south enough you can see from Paris probably you can see it and lower than that we see just a little bit of it the top of it from the Britain and yeah this is a Milky Way by the way then moving toward uh, gradually the, the emptier area of the spring sky which is full of galaxies and you can see more galaxy uh, galaxies are visible we are now leaving the realm of the uh, nebulas and the uh, star clusters we are looking through a window um, away from the plane of the milky way toward the universe so springtime is a time for observing the uh, galaxies so we are seeing gradually galaxies appearing uh, in the cancer area also and there is a uh, abundance of this uh, abundance of the kind of galaxies some of them are really far away we're getting gradually close to the uh, galaxies in the cancer uh, leo uh, area and a lot of them also exist in the head of the um, your um, major and uh, constellations around it. Now we are moving more toward the realm of the galaxies. Leo galaxies are now visible. I have a book about the Harp galaxies, or Hickson galaxies actually, which I will do also another time uh, paging through it. This is a guide for you. I'm just sh showing you what this book is all about. Now we are seeing the central parts of the Leo, the Leo's head, and also uh, here we have the Hydra, Sextant, and Ursa Major. All the galaxies, beautiful galaxies are visible. I have seen so many of these. When you target a bigger one and you see a bigger one, you suddenly notice around it is full of little smudges. Those are all the NGC objects that you see. <laughs> you, if you find a messy object a galaxy in this area, you you can be sure you are seeing also some other NGC objects there. Even with the smallest, uh, even 60 millimeter, uh, you know, uh, refractor can show you that. Now we are moving toward the central parts of the Leo, and now we are going toward the uh, tail part of the Leo, gradually moving. I'm excited now because we are going to see the Leo's triplet, and gradually all those galaxies M65, M66 can be visible. Yeah, Leo triplet is here now. And we can see the galaxy of the low triplet. <coughs> Easily visible in the smallest apertures even. But for the best observation of this, you can use either a six inch refractor, a sky watcher, evil star, very nicely, you can see. And um, also 12 inch Dapsonia. Again, these are the part of the lowest triplet. Now we are moving toward the tail of the Leo and gradually seeing the objects in the um, deeper space, including the objects that are in the Virgo constellation and the uh, Como Bernice, or Bernice, and the tail of the Big Dipper and uh, <coughs> the handle of the Big Dipper and the Crow, or Curvus. That's uh, very interesting. We are now moving. Oh, that's a crater, sorry, crater. Cup and the curvus is there. So, deeper and deeper looking in the cosmos. And now we are in the area of the Virgo. Virgo galaxies are numerous, including the most beautiful called Markarian chain. And Markarian chain is somewhere here, in the middle of the cup of the Virgo. So, Markarian chains are here. They are pictured here individually. Some of them are uh, messier objects, so you can see them easier. 
And now we have uh, to look for the Black Eye Galaxy. M106 also, and M99. Oh, many of them are actually having the NGC numbers. Was it Black Eye Galaxy somewhere? This is in the, between Crater and Virgo. It's very easy to find it. Anyway, we are now moving inside. <coughs> and uh, looking more deeper into this space somewhere here in the uh, Como Bernice or in Leo probably I forgot exactly where it was there is a there is a quas quasar the brightest quasar I've seen it uh, I have a video about that Yes, we are now looking at uh, a lot of different objects in this area. Black Eye Galaxy is somewhere here. Uh, we will see if we can find it. Very interesting objects, full of galaxies. Yeah, M104, that's this one. Oh, Sombrero Galaxy, sorry. Black Eye Galaxy is in the Coma Bernice, here. Yeah. That's a Sombrero. Very beautiful, easy to see. Right, quite actually. And we are now moving toward uh, uh, Virgo, leaving the Virgo cluster gradually and looking at the Coma Bernice cluster. But that's not yet the end. Because we will be seeing the objects which are in the springer sky uh, completely away from the plane of the Milky Way. So fascinating number of the objects to, to add to your observation list. And yet you can even see some star clusters or uh, NGC 5053, what is it? 5053, oh, global cluster. That's very odd in that place, but anyway, here you have it. Oh, M51, a showcase, that's in the Canis Venetici. And we are seeing uh, lovely objects like the hmm, M83, M3 global cluster which is here and we are now getting near the um, Buddhist and uh, Virgo is such a big one that is the leg part of the Virgo we are passing and uh, looking at those beautiful interacting galaxies there are pairs here yeah trio of the NGC 5276-79 that is amazing now we are moving more toward the east and the uh, Buddhist and the uh, easternmost part the feet part of the Virgo is there this is the galaxy, which is uh, NGC 5746. Uh, 5746, yeah. That's a magnitude 10 galaxy, beautiful. I have to observe this one. Yeah, we are now seeing gradually globular cluster M5 coming. So we are getting close to the plane of the Milky Way. It's amazing that how in 19th, and, uh, 19th century and 20th century we started gradually to map the positions of these things in the sky, finding that the global cluster make a halo around us, finding the shape of the galaxy. For us it looks obvious, but for the ancients it was not probably that, uh, that much obvious. And now we are moving uh, completely to the areas of the um, Scorpion, Libra, the Serpent Coda, uh, or Serpent Coat, uh, Caput, and uh, 
uh, Hercules and all the Draco. Draco has a lot of uh, faint galaxies to look at. And we are in the Ophiuchus now, which surprisingly is one of the constellations of the Zodiac, but is not included in the ancient list, but we know that it is part of it, the southern part of it. Anyway, interesting. <coughs> now we see a lot of uh, globular clusters now, and only a few galaxies like NGC 6140, uh, which is magnitude uh, 11.6. And now we are back to the, again, the star clusters and nebulas, including also some galaxies yet, which we'll have to look through the swarm of the closer stars of our own galaxy toward them. And we are now going, moving toward the, gradually toward the Sagittarius, and full of star clusters and nebulas. And a few, of course, in the northern part, where there is a way you can see some galaxies yet. So we are now going to look toward the other side, the denser part of the inner part, or the nucleus of our own galaxy. It's full of, uh, you know, clouds, uh, dark clouds, bright clouds, you know, emission clouds, and nebulas that are visible, like what we saw in the winter sky. But the winter sky objects are closer to us, so they're bigger and more visible. So this side is a little bit further away. So we are closer to the Orion or Perseus arm of our galaxy, probably in that sense. And the M57, uh, because there was a lot of stars there, we have a lot of supernovas visible from our own, or no novas in this area. And also some uh, stars which are de de degenerated and creating the, the planetary nebulas. The density of them, the chance of the seeing them is higher in these areas. Again, we are seeing some planetary nebulas, beautiful star clusters. And it's the time that in the northern hemisphere, especially in northern, uh, northwest Europe and England and UK, uh, the skies are relatively brighter compared and it gets really less dark. But it's a nice time. It's a nice time to observe. Because it's easier, the weather is you know more pleasant. We are going toward the beauties of the Cygnus and the um, yeah, Cygnus arm of the galaxy with the big gap, dark clouds and bright clouds. This is a supernova remnant uh, mask galaxy, or we call it also uh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, these are NGC 6992 anyway. And that's called the uh, Venus Belt. North American Nebula, a part of it you can see, Pelican Nebula also. Whale Galaxy, yeah. I told the French name, yeah, Whale Galaxy is the English name of it. Of course, Whale again is, is Latin French, probably. And, uh, yeah. That's part of the North North American Nebulas, and this is seven thousand. Yeah, North American Nebulas this is a Gulf of Mexico part, and yet again some nebulas, uh, uh, globular clusters, and planetary nebula. That's the time for planetary nebulas. We are looking gradually away from the uh, plane of the Milky Way, and the galaxies are appearing. I like the way this book is presented. It practically shows you everything according to the in relation to the Milky Way. That's really nice. Uh, you see how easy it is for me to explain everything because it's just it's just there. And that's the Helix Nebula. Um, is a planetary nebula. M27, I think, NGC 7293. Anyway, maybe not that. It has an NGC number only. And this is 27 is something, um, M27 is something else. In World Pecula, I think that is. This is very really aquarius. Anyway, we are now looking toward, uh, again, back to the Andromeda. Pegasus, then Andromeda. So we are looking again at the galaxies. A few star clusters, a few nebulas, but yet more 
galaxies. We are back to the point we started in the outer. And this is all the list of all the uh, uh, objects that we had covered in this uh, book according to the constellations. That starts from here. Then, oh no, according to the type of the object. Oh no, that's the constellations. Yeah, that's a, according to constellation. Then type of the objects also, objects also mentioned, and the page you have to look for them. So it's a handy guide for you. Of course, when you get familiar with the night sky, you don't need this. You all everything you just you just directly go to the list. This is also the abbreviation of the uh, uh, the kind of objects you see. This is the last page. Then you can buy it from the uh, author. Atlas NGC Photographic. This is the website, and he has several other books, and I recommend to get them. I may get them later. The, this book uh, probably costs around fifty-one pound if you buy it in the from the UK. In Europe, probably it's cheaper because the postage will not be added to that. So that was my paging the full NGC Atlas Photographic. And uh, consider it as also a review of it. As you have seen, it's very easy, uh, very um, informative and um, inductive. You, you can just uh, go with the seasons and every night and find the objects that you liked to make a list. I have to ask Susan, that was uh, patient enough actually to let me you know, use here beautiful table for doing this review. Thank you, Suzanne.